This is a repair of a floating inferior glenohumeral ligament utilized with the Parkus 1.8 millimeter draw tight anchors as well as the 2.8 millimeter knotless anchors. So looking up here at the humerus, we can see that our posterior inferior glenohumeral ligament is complex as well as our capsule is torn, peeled off the humerus and split back at the capsule itself. This is actually a fairly significant sized hole within the capsule and we can see that we don't have a significant hill sacs lesion that we're dealing with, but we do have this large avulsion of the capsule and glenohumeral ligament resulting in significant laxity. So here we're probing and we're at the insertion of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. You can see we can drop our probe way down into there so this is essentially a floating posterior glenohumeral ligament so we're going to have to make provisions for repairing both sides of the lesion or we're going to have continued instability. So our next step is to proceed into our subacromial space. Here I'm clearing up the tissue behind the humerus itself. We're trying to clear out infraspinatus and the teres minor region so that we can see because we're going to perform essentially capsulorphy when we repair our inferior glenohumeral ligament. And so we want to get good adequate visualization. So here I'm utilizing a velox ablator to clear out the soft tissue. Give me nice adequate visualization posteriorly. Also I can utilize a shaver. I'm trying to reduce the amount of bleeding so when I go back in there though I don't have a lot of bleeding to deal with later. See, we're back inside the glenohumeral joint. We've already passed our suture at the location that we want to place our anchor for the glenoid refixation. We'll bring in our drill guide. Now on this side, I'm simply utilizing a 2.8 millimeter knotless anchor. So I got my sutures passed. I've got the tension on it that I find appropriate, and then I'm just going to engage the anchor down in the socket as a standard technique. So you can see that we're recreating that nice bumper inferiorly. And we've got a nice little shift of our posterior inferior glenohumeral ligament with that pass. So now we're back up to the humeral side of the lesion. You can see I'm actually utilizing the rent in the capsule as a window so I can see, as opposed to creating more tears in that posterior capsule. So I place one anchor, but the most superior aspect of this tear that I feel comfortable in getting to without coming out and penetrating the articular surface. I do this utilizing a 1.8 millimeter draw tight anchor. I'm utilizing both my posterior portal as well as my posterior lateral portal as described by Nord. So I'm actually just going to puncture through the capsule, place my second anchor so you can see I've got my blue and white sutures and my white sutures there that I've toggled and left inside too so I can utilize all my sutures for this repair. I'm actually going to pass the white sutures to close down the capsule rent later, but I'm also going to use the bird beak suture passers to adjust the position of the blue sutures so I can get the appropriate amount of tension on my repair and essentially this looks a whole lot like a remplissage. So here we are utilizing our bird beak penetrators to pass our sutures through that capsule rent and around it so that we can close this down and we'll also use these to adjust the position of our blue sutures so that we can create an appropriate tension on the capsule and the inferior glenohumeral ligament when we complete our repair. So now that we've got our sutures passed, I'm simply assessing the tension. I like this tension. Remember, we've already cleared out the subacromial space, so we need to go back in there, pull our sutures into our cannula, and start tying. So the next view will actually drop outside the shoulder, and we can see that we've got our sutures pulled out through our cannula. I've actually already shoved them down into the shoulder, so I loop two tails from the opposite anchors together, pull those down, and then I start approximating with the other tails. This basically pulls the capsule in a double pulley technique all the way down to the humeral head and allows me to get this a nice secure position, adjusting the tension with my knots.